Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the free program called Krita to make a very basic walk cycle that can then be taken to a game engine. Um, in our class, uh, we'll be using Stencil as the 2D game engine, and we'll be drawing um, a handful of frames so that we can then go ahead and have a uh, character walking. All right, so here I am in Krita, and I'm going to start off by going up to File and New. And um, there are three basic sizes that I recommend. Um, the first one is 32 by 32. That will give you a one tile uh, sized character. Um, the next one would be 32 by 64. That will give you a character that's two tiles tall. Um, and that will then uh, be maybe more of a humanoid character. Um, and last but not least, um, 64 by 64. Um, is a pretty good size uh, two by two character. Uh, for this example tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and do 32 by 64 uh, with a resolution of 72 and click on create. All right, so we have the canvas here. Now, if your credit doesn't look like mine, that's probably because of the workspace. So you want to come up here in the top right hand corner and you want to choose animation. Uh, when you choose animation, uh, you'll get your layers here on the left, really important. You'll get your animation window, uh, or sorry, your animation docker here in the bottom left, and your timeline down here. Now, this isn't really a tutorial on how to animate, although I will cover that. There are many others out there uh, that cover the basics of how to animate, um, and I even have some older ones on my uh, channel. Uh, this is just how to set up for a walk cycle. Okay, so I'm going to get my brush presets over here on the right. So I'm going to go up to the settings menu, dockers, and brush presets. And there we go. And I'll be using the ink category, and I'll be using this fourth one here called basic five size. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set up my layers first. Um, I like to call my layer one, I call that BG for background, and I'm going to lock that by clicking on this little padlock icon. Layer two um, is going to be um, a reference line. So I'm just going to call that ref line. You'll see what that is in just a moment. And I'm going to make one last layer here by clicking on this little square with a plus symbol in it. And I'm going to rename that and I'll call that character. Okay, so there we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just save my project real quickly just in case Krita crashes. So I'm going to go to my desktop and I'll just call this uh, walk cycle demo uh, 2. Okay, good. Um, so now what I would probably do is I'd probably go to a web browser um, and go ahead and do a Google search uh, for walk cycle and see what you can get. Um, the one that I'm using is basically this one here. Um, this is from a world famous animator named Jonathan Williams, uh, very famous for Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Um, and this is a good one here. The only thing missing is it doesn't have any frame numbers on it, so you'll either have to figure that out yourself or you can find one of these others down here that uh, does it something like that. So I've already downloaded this image, um, and here we go. All right, so I'm going to do File, Open, Inside Credit, and I'm going to go ahead and open up that walk cycle image. So I've got it here so I can use it as a reference. Okay, so you'll notice that um, there are two lines here. There's the ground line, and then there's the headline here. I'm going to draw in the headline. Um, the ground line I don't need to draw in because uh, that's the bottom of my um, canvas here. So I'm going to select my ref line layer and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make sure that I clicked on frame zero and then I'm going to click on this button here that says add a blank frame. Let me draw you a, a fancy arrow there. Alright, so there's my new blank frame and adds it on frame zero and then I'm going to just go ahead and choose my brush and actually I might even just grab the line tool and just drag it out and I think it'll be something like this over here and something like that. There we go. Okay, so that's about where the headline is going to go. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and change my colors. Okay, so there it is there. Uh, I'm going to lower the opacity so it's not quite so dark. Alright, so now I'm ready to start animating and um, I'm going to select my character layer 
go down to frame zero and I'm going to tap on the add a blank frame here. So there it is there. And the very first frame I'm on uh, is going to be frame zero. So this contact position is going to be my frame zero. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll just draw it out. I'll probably pause during uh, the time so you don't have to watch me draw it. It's going to be a very simple sort of stick figure there. Um, whoops, should go back to the uh, brush tool. Don't forget to go back to the brush tool. All right, so I, again, I'm going to copy uh, the walk cycle here. Uh, you can go ahead and do your own character. I'm going to go ahead and pause, uh, and I'll see you in just a moment. Okay, so we're back and I've got just the basis. Uh, again, I'm going off of the uh, walk cycle image here. You'll notice that the um, left side of the character is darker here in shadow uh, to make it look like it's a little further away and also to be able to tell the difference between the two. So I'm gonna go back here to my advanced color selector here and just choose a darker shadow um, and be able to then, sometimes credit takes a moment to catch up. Okay, there we go. And I'll go ahead and I'll just draw in that other arm, something like this. So this isn't going to be terribly uh, pretty, um, but we want it to be in proportion and we want it to um, just make sense. All right. Okay, um, so a couple of shortcut keys that I'm going to be using here uh, quite a bit on a Mac. Hold down the command key and that lets you sample colors so I can just brush over and make things look a little cleaner. I might press E for eraser and I can then go ahead and um, you know, do a little cleanup, do a little trimming, press E again, um, and then I can uh, draw again. That way I don't have to change brushes. Um, and there we go. Okay, so that's my first frame. That's on frame zero. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my left and right arrow key and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna navigate to frame two. And on frame two, I'm going to add a blank frame, and of course, he disappears. So now I need to turn on onion skinning, and onion skinning is right here in the timeline. It's this little uh, light bulb here. Um, a lot of beginners think that the onion skinning, to turn it on, is actually this button here because it looks like an onion. Those are the onion skinning settings, and those will let you configure your onion skin. I find that the default settings are actually pretty darn good. So I would just turn on the little light bulb and now you can see your character here. Okay, so a little time saver is the, um, is the duplicate function and that is actually this middle button right here, duplicate function. So the way it works in Krita is you, you select the frame where you want it to paste and I'm on frame two. Then you simply tap the duplicate command um, and it should paste it right in there. Um, of course, for the demonstration that I'm recording here, it's not working, so I'm going to go ahead and remove what it added there. I'll try it again, duplicate. Okay, so this time it worked. Um, it did paste right in there, and there's an exact copy. Now, if for some reason it doesn't work, um, what you could do is you could go over here and you can go back to frame zero. You can take your mouse and you can right mouse click, choose copy to clipboard, go to frame two, right mouse click and paste from clipboard and that always works so takes a second longer but it always works I'm right, gonna go ahead and save so now what I want to do is I'm on frame two um, now I want to do the second pose and this is called the squash pose or the down pose and you can see where it's going so it's going below the headline and the body is compressing a little bit so I'm just gonna take the move tool which is the letter T and I'm just gonna drag downwards so the whole body goes down just a little bit okay go back to the brush tool and now what I can do is I can go ahead and erase um, the arms because the arms are of course going to change position I can maybe erase the legs and just be left with the torso and there we go and I can then go ahead and start uh, drawing again and I'm gonna go ahead and pause it okay so we're back um, a quick way to get back to your uh, colors if you do erase all the arms and legs um, is if you come um, up here where your layers are and click on this little tab that says advanced color selector you'll see that over here on the right hand side there's a little color history and so I can just tap um, on my two uh, shades of blue that I want so we'll just finish up this arm here kind of going forward a little bit and something like that 
again on the Mac command key to um, sample colors and there we go okay so I'm gonna go ahead and call that finished for the second frame I'll save um, and that's it so that's pretty much the rest of the process so um, when you're all done you're gonna end up with five frames one two three four five so for the third frame that's the passing position um, which looks like a number four uh, this is where you're going to do a similar step. You're going to um, copy uh, frame two, go to frame four, right mouse click, paste, um, use the move tool, and now the character's head is actually going above the headline, so you can just do that. Um, it's not going as high as the fourth pose, but it's just going above, so just get it there. Um, and then you would go ahead and you would um, finish drawing it out. When you're all done, um, you're going to go ahead and uh, you're going to have a total of five frames. Um, so I'll be back in just a moment and I'll have a uh, finished one here for you. Okay, so I'm back. Here's a uh, earlier one that I made, uh, slightly different body proportions, but you can basically see it here. Um, so here's the uh, here's the pose, and you can kind of see it. And there we go. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, the last couple things I'll point out is that uh, right um, here you have the start and end frame. Uh, I changed my end frame to eight because I've done eight frames. Um, and then to watch it, you're probably going to want to change your frame rate from 24 to something lower like um, eight or 10 or 12 or 15 and see how that looks. So if I go ahead and I press play, uh, you can see it's a little choppy. It's not terribly smooth. I only have five frames. Uh, but I think that will look good in my video game engine, which is going to be stencil. Um, okay, last but not least, before I finish up here, um, there are these empty frames on the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, and 7. Um, if you don't create keyframes and draw inside those, what will happen is frame 0 will just hold for two frames. So it'll be the exact same thing. Frame 2 will hold for two frames and then it'll go to frame four, and it'll hold for two frames. And you kind of get the idea. Um, all right, so what we're going to do before we uh, finish up is I'm going to show you how to export your frames out of um, Krita so that they could be used in stencil. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide my reference line layer so there's no headline there. And I'm going to hide the background uh, so we have a transparent background. We want that for our game. So I'm going to go up here to File, and I'm going to choose Render Animation. Um, you want to make sure that your first frame is at zero, and your last frame is at your last keyframe. In my case, it's eight. I want it to be a PNG image. Uh, the image location, you're going to click right here on the right and click on a folder. I'm going to go to my desktop, um, and I'm going to make a new folder. So up here in the top right, there's a little folder with a plus icon. Click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and double click and I'll call it uh, Walk Frames. I'm going to call it Walk Frames 2 because I've already done this. And then I'm going to say Choose to choose this folder. So now it does it. And now it wants to know what the base name of every frame is. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this uh, Walk R since the character is walking to the right. And it's going to start numbering at frame 0. And you'll see why in a moment. So it only takes a few seconds that literally just finish there. So now I'm going to minimize Krita and I'll go find my folder here and inside my folder you can see um, that I have um, all of the frames. So even though I didn't draw a frame one, um, Krita went ahead and copied it and it's basically it's a copy of frame uh, zero. Um, and so there we go there. So those are all of the individual images. You can see the size dimensions underneath them. Um, and now it's ready to be brought into your game engine or put it online or do whatever you want. All right, thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.